Hey guys, welcome to a Tuesday bonus video. We have our weekly video every Friday, but sometimes we have a bonus video on Tuesday and today we are reviewing the HPC GK1 mini PC. With these mini PCs there are so many on the market. What you should watch out for is getting a current model with the Gemini Lake generation and avoid any of the older Apollo Lake or Cherry Trail mini PCs. With storage I also recommend avoiding 32GB models. You won't be able to install some Windows updates for example and it's definitely worth upgrading to a 64GB model. This mini PC has the latest Gemini Lake processor. It's an Intel Celeron J4105. It has 64GB of storage which can be expanded and it also comes with 4GB of DDR4 memory. The unit sells for $219 through Amazon, so let's find out what it can do and see if it's worth getting. Let's have a look what's inside the box. We have a Visa mounting bracket to install it at the back of the screen. There's also a manual that's actually pretty useful with some setup tips that I can see people appreciate, especially if you're not used to setting up computers. I really appreciate that this unit comes with an Australian power supply. It is rated at 12 volts and 2.5 amps. The cable is rather short, 1 meter and 20 centimeters. It's just long enough to reach the floor when the mini PC is on a desk. Also included is a HDMI cable. This one is also rather short, 80 centimeters, and you can use it if the mini PC is right next to your monitor or TV, but not much further than that. Something I really like about this unit is that not only can you expand the storage with a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive or SSD, the entire drive expansion is removable. There are two locks at the bottom of the unit so you just unlock the drive bay and off it comes. So this is great if you're happy with the internal storage, the unit is now more compact and if you change your mind later you can just attach it again. The specifications also mention a M.2 slot inside the unit. For this one be sure to get the correct drive. It has to be a NVMe PCI Express M.2 SSD with 2242 dimensions. I couldn't test the M.2 slot because my SSD is longer and wouldn't fit. The unit lights are blue. Firstly this is my favorite color and I also like that it's not super bright like many other devices. I think it looks great next to a TV watching a movie in the dark and it doesn't distract at all. And when the machine goes into sleep the color changes to red so that's also very pretty. Pre-installed is Windows 10 Home fully activated but it was an older version and Windows Update took its sweet time so after a few hours I decided to perform a clean installation instead. Pro tip, copy the file repository folder onto a USB storage. This contains all the drivers and when you do a clean installation you need to manually install the sound drivers. The digital license got picked up automatically and we are ready to go. The Intel storage is from Samsung and I ran Crystal Disk Mark and we're getting pretty solid performance. I also installed a 500GB SSD and the scores improved across the board, but I noticed that the sequential read and write numbers weren't as high as they should be. The unit has two USB 2.0 and two USB 3.0 ports, so I tested the same SSD in a USB 3.0 enclosure and here we're seeing the sequential read and write numbers that are expected, so I'm not sure why the drive benchmarks are a little bit slower through the internal drive bay. The Celeron J4105 is a quad-core CPU with up to 2.5 GHz. From having tested a few mini PCs in the past, every manufacturer tunes their PCs a little bit different. Some aim for a quiet and cool operation, but at the cost of lower performance. The Ace PC is definitely tuned for high performance. For example, in the CPU set stress test, it starts off with around 778 points and after 10 minutes of stress testing, slows down to 712 points with a clock speed of 2.2 GHz and 71 degrees temperature. I compare that to my B-Link X45 with the same CPU. This one starts off at 772 points, but after 10 minutes slows down to just 593 points with a clock speed of 1800 MHz and 64 degrees temperature. So on paper they are both identical, but the Ace PC ends up 20% faster when the processor is actually fully used. I could also see higher performance in games. For example in Doom 3 the B-Link scores 36 FPS whereas the Ace PC achieves 39 FPS. 
Now this unit has an internal fan and I know that noise is of great interest to many of you. So firstly the fan speed doesn't change, it's constantly on. To be honest I prefer this over a fan that keeps switching on and off, but you might see this differently. How loud is the fan? Well this is very subjective, but I do my best to describe it. In a typical room you can definitely hear the fan. In my room for example I've got a ceiling fan and if that is on low speed I can definitely hear the mini PC, but if the ceiling fan is on medium or high speed then the mini PC can't be heard anymore. The room also has a split system air condition and when that's running you also cannot hear the mini PC. Another example, next to my mini PC I have a 4 bay drive enclosure from IcyDock which also has a fan and that unit is clearly louder than this mini PC. So to sum it up, the fan is audible, you can hear it in a quiet room, but if you're watching a movie or you've got some other device running in the background, then you should not have any issues. We have two HDMI 2.0 ports, so both can drive a 4K display at the full 60Hz refresh rate. I hooked up my BenQ 4K monitor and confirmed that this is fully working. The Intel graphics driver has quite a few options. You can drive two monitors and clone or extend the image. There are settings to configure limited or full RGB. For games you can configure profiles to enable anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering and V-Sync. And there is also options to use GPU scaling. Such a mini player is perfect as a media player. The onboard graphics accelerates the video really well. I tested Netflix and 1080p videos ran perfectly. YouTube, it depends on the browser. Avoid Google Chrome, here even basic 1080p videos would drop frames, which got worse with 60 FPS videos and 4K was unusable. This is with the VP9 codec. Now Edge on the other hand, that worked perfectly. Edge also supports the VP9 codec and here all videos played perfectly without dropping any frames even at 4K with 60 frames per second. I also tested playing some local video files that I created myself with the H.264 codec 1080p videos with 60 megabits per second work just fine that's at 30 and 60 fps and at 4k the video files have 200 megabits per second and they also ran silky smooth at either 30 or 60 fps. The newer H.265 HEVC codec also worked just fine at 1080p. The test files used 39 megabits per second and played without any issues. And so did the 4K files with 128 megabits per second. They also ran fine and that's for both 30 and 60 FPS. I use my current mini PC as a 24-7 home server. This unit has a gigabit ethernet and also dual band 802.11ac wireless as well as Bluetooth. I found the wireless performance just fine, but personally I always use the ethernet to connect to my home network. There's also an SD card reader, so I plugged in a Samsung micro SD card and looking at the test results it's clear that the card reader is connected through USB 2.0 so if you're transferring a lot of photos or other files you should look at getting a USB 3.0 card reader instead. Now I always do my best to be thorough and test as much as possible and I noticed something strange when testing the sound, specifically the 3.5mm port. So this port supports regular headphones as well as headsets so you can use the microphone and headphones with just a single port. The microphone has the usual settings for level and amplification. The quality is average, when you boost the signal there is quite a bit of noise but there are options to reduce that. So the issue I noticed is that the audio channels are the wrong way around. The left sound comes out of the right speakers and the right sound comes out of the left speakers. I never experienced anything like that. It looks like a design flaw and I'm not sure if there's a workaround. I couldn't find a setting in Windows to swap the channels and I'm not sure if this actually can be fixed through a BIOS update either. I tried a range of headsets and headphones but they all behaved in the same way. Now to be clear, this only affects the analog output at the back of the mini PC. If you're using audio through the HDMI ports or a Bluetooth device, then everything is fine and the audio channels work as expected and there's nothing to worry about. For those that are interested, the BIOS is fully unlocked and has a ton of options. 
Also, using a power meter, I measured only 4 watts when the machine is idle sitting on the desktop. And when you do something more demanding, this can go as high as 11 watts. But this is still excellent and perfectly fine for running 24-7 as a home server. Ace PC also have a website with product information, forums, downloads and FAQs. I was able to find driver downloads for this mini PC in the forum section, but I noticed that the FAQ section, uh, all the links aren't working. But still, this is better than many other companies offer that are reviewed in the past. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the Ace PC GK1. The performance stood out to me. I like the look of the unit and the LED lighting and how the drive bay can be removed. We have a nice range of ports. You can drive two 4K monitors at 60 Hz and video playback performance was flawless. Really, the only issue I encountered was the swapped channels on the headphone port. Now I will communicate that back to Ace PC and if there are any updates, I will put a pinned comment down below or update the video description. For $219, I think you're getting good value, and I can see this mini PC being used in all sorts of situations. But what do you think about this mini PC? Leave a comment down below. I will see you soon with our weekly Friday video, but keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes there will be a bonus video like this one. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like and click on that notification bell and I shall see you soon with another one.